You own a small gym and have inherited some equipment from a bigger gym in town. You figure that in about three years, the equipment will need to be replaced and it will cost about $120,000. You have $100,000 to invest now and would like to invest it to receive the needed money three years from now. If you can invest the money at 6% semi-annually, do you have enough money to invest in order to receive the needed amount in time? Really what this question is asking is, will my $100,000 grow to be $120,000 in three years? Let's move on over to our spreadsheet. Okay, well what we know right now is that the present value of your investment is $100,000. And we're hoping that in three years it has a future value of $120,000. Well, the rate is 6% and the compound frequency is semi-annual, which means it happens twice a year and the time is of course just three years. So we're going to compute the future value of your loan now, of your investment. I'm going to go up to my F sub X up here at the top. I'm going to choose that and F of F V rather future value is again right there at the top. Let's go through and do some of our, uh, our thought process here. The interest rate per period, well I've got six percent that happens over the calendar year, but I have two compounding periods. I have to divide it by my compounding frequency annually. The number of periods, well, I've got three years to do it, but I have two periods per year, so it must be three times two. I don't have a payment again, but I do have a present value. So you're gonna, the reason we think about the minus sign is you're like, you're losing the $100,000. It's not that you're losing it, it's just that you're losing the ability to access it. You're putting it somewhere else, so you hope to have a positive number that returns to you. And you can already see the number show up over here. So let's look again. My rate was my interest rate divided by my compound frequency. My number of periods was my compounding frequency times my time. And my present value was the negative original deposit of $100,000. Well, in three years, you have $119,405. Is that enough money? No, it's not. But let's take a second and just tinker, if you're okay with that. So you know that at $100,000, you don't have enough money to make it to be at $120,000 in three years. What if I had done $105,000? Well, yeah, I've got more than enough now, or I've got $5,000 plus enough. What if I do 102, 500, so halfway between? 122, I'm still high. What if I do 101, 250, another halfway mark? I'm at 128.97. What if I do 101,000? 120,600, so I've still got, I, could, I don't even need as much as, as $1,000 more. What if I have $100,500 more? I'm $2.26 heavy. Okay, so I don't need even $500 more. What if I do 101, 250, or rather 100, 250? Then I still don't have enough money. I'm at 119,703. Well, let's try 100, 375. Again, not enough. So let's keep raising that amount. 100, 425. Still shy? 100, 450, still shy. 100, 475, still shy. 100, 4, let's say 490, still $10 shy. 495, still a little bit shy. At 100,499, I'm over. I'm shy by four bucks. I'm under, but 100,499 was over. At 100,498, and uh, let's uh, let's increase some decimal spots here. 498.50, I'm I break it by 46 cents. I lose it by 13. 17 cents up. Oh.
Well, at 100,000, 48 and 11 cents, I'm 120,000 flat in three years. So basically what I just did was I showed you something neat about a spreadsheet. We set it all up to show the future value and then I adjusted these original values to see what happens to my future value. That took some work. Is there an easier way that if I know how much I wanted in three years to have determined how much I needed now? Yes, there is, and we're going to do that soon.